That was adorable and delicious. Hi, good morning. First full day here in Seoul, and every time I'm here, there's certain things I crave right off the bat. So last night, got some tteokbokki, got some jjeolbokki, got some hotteok, and today I am just aching, aching for some Korean barbecue and some jjajangmyeon. You know, they kind of ache like when vampires haven't had blood in like a week or something. I'm thinking this must be what they're feeling. And right now, the weather is perfect. It's drizzling a little bit. Perfect noodle weather. I mean, granted, there is no bad weather for noodles, but there is great weather, and this is it. Oh, it's like the bear pooped custard. Sorry if biting this thing's head off was really disturbing for a lot of you, but this is very, very good. Is it too early in the morning for puns? Not right. Here it is, the ultimate Korean cheap meat. Three dollars a bowl for the jajangmyeon. Jajangmyeon, uh, sweet sour pork. Yeah. Yeah. Seven thousand. Okay. I've never been so happy to have a bowl of jajangmyeon in front of me. I've been craving this for so long. And I found this place um, because Chinese people love it. So they've been raving about it, like overseas Chinese when they come here. They all come to this place and they say this jajangmyeon is the best. And of course jajangmyeon was originally a Chinese dish, so I figured they probably know what they're talking about. I mean, as soon as I walked in, this place is a quintessential mom and pop shop. I mean, the mom's cooking, the pop serving and taking the money. I didn't realize the noodles were made Fresh. So this literally came out the noodle maker about five minutes ago. And a bowl of jajangmyeon, pretty big bowl as well, topped with big chunks of meat, onions, sauce, and a plate of sweet and sour pork. And that's what you're supposed to eat this with. Three dollars, four dollars, total of seven dollars. If you want a good cheap eat in Seoul, probably can't find anything better than this. Now let's see if it lives up to the hype. This is delicious jajangmyeon. It's got that crazy deep umami flavor. There's some sort of fat in here that's rendering as you're chewing. So the noodle becomes better. Big old chunks of meat. Sauce is creamy. It's not too fermented. And definitely not overly sweet at all. The pork, sweet and sour pork. It's just like it should be. Crispy on the outside, covered in that thick, sweet glaze. And there's already a little chili in here. I feel a slight bit of burn, but let's add some more. The noodles have some sort of like almost buttery flavor to it. I think above anything, it's the chewiness of the noodles that really sets it apart. The texture is just so elasticy, it has such a nice mouthfeel. I think that above all is what really sets this apart. And that sweet pop and crunch from the sweet and sour pork, it's really a perfect combo. This place, they don't skimp on the meat, they don't skimp on the sauce, they definitely don't skimp on the noodles. I mean, this thing costs less than a six inch Subway sandwich, and I guarantee you, this is gonna taste way better. If the flavors get a little too much for you, chop on a pickle radish. Refresh your taste buds again. And then just hit the repeat button. I'm a big fan of restaurants where you walk in, they only serve like a few things. And here, these noodles, the pork, a seafood dish, that's like the only thing they have here. It's not all tourists. Most people here right now, all Koreans. And also, any chance I get to support a mom and pop operation like this, I'm gonna do it. This thing definitely scratched my jajangmyeon itch. I mean, we're in the world, in a relatively expensive city, can you find freshly made noodles, delicious ones, for $3. When you're here, come get a bowl. I'll support this couple. They deserve it. That was much needed. I mean, is it the best jajangmyeon I've ever had in my life? I think that honor probably goes to my mom, but it definitely tastes like something that came out of a grandma's kitchen, which it basically did. All right, let's go walk around, find some dessert and get ready for dinner.
This place is so adorable. The floor is heated, so it's nice and toasty. You can't see it. There's like a little gazebo type. They get their own little private tea room. That's the best. Sweet red bean porridge. Um, shaved ice, jujube, honey cookie set, Korean traditional tea, long white rice cake, Korean traditional tea, dry chrysanthemum. Yeah, let's do the rice cake and the traditional tea. I'm also gonna try this porridge. Pretty interesting. This tea comes in a traditional bowl. It's almost like a soup with jujube and pine nuts inside. Rice cake. And this is the porridge that I got. Oh, this looks thick. This is interesting. Never had tea like this before. Oh, it's very, very, very earthy tasting. Ooh. This tea reminds me of Kim Kardashian. It is thick. It's a little herby, but it doesn't taste like tea. It tastes like it's a soup. This will definitely not quench your thirst. It is very, very thick. And I'm already kind of regretting this one. This one looks like red bean quicksand or something. Oh my gosh. Oh, good God. There's mochi, little nuts, jujube inside as well. Ooh. It's good, but it's very, very sweet. Asians, we love red bean in desserts, and that's especially true in Korea. It just tastes very velvety and smooth and very, very thick. The texture reminds me of mashed potato. I feel like I ordered too many sweet things. That's delicious. Toasted mochi. It reminds me of like the bottom layer of rice in a rice cooker, or it's more toasted. It's actually not overly sweet at all. I feel like that, is my salvation. Honestly, don't get the juju BT. That, oof, this red bean is good, but man, don't try to tackle this by yourself. Overall though, I love places like this. Really traditional little spot, and I just sit with a little ring drizzling down outside. I really do like settings like this. It's so calming and relaxing. By the way, this area I'm at right now is called Inside Dome. It's kind of a touristy place, but it's super cool. I like it here. Got tons of artsy stuff, pottery, handmade paper products, a lot of these traditional tea shops like the one I was at right now. So it's just really fun to kind of walk around and pick up some souvenirs for your friends. And look at this, it's so cute. It's a great place to walk around, digest a little bit before my big barbecue dinner. Welcome to the meat market. Let's go check it out. In this place, this is a really local place. You can come here, you can buy the meats for your household. I mean, this is as fresh as you can get. To get me help, all I'm asking for is just some space and some time, then I'll be alright. I've been having thoughts in my mind, I can't get up. Tell me things I can't say myself from you and nobody else. Everything is out of my sight. This is also new to me. I can do it all in your way. Say all the things that you say. I can do it all. This is by far the coolest Korean barbecue experience I think I've ever had in my life. Like just being a part of that process. This reminds me of the seafood market I went to where you pick out your seafood and then you take it to a restaurant they cook it for you. But this is like that except for it's steak. And we got different types of meat. They give us some uh, beef sashimi and then these will go into a soup. So the restaurant will put these into a soup. We're gonna have soup as well. And then everything is just going on the grill. And it's charcoal grill. So you already got that gray smoke. Oh, that smells good. I've ate plenty of Korean barbecues in my life. This is by far the most exciting time for me. I mean, all the different cuts of meat, all the beef, you see this, right? Crazy quality hangul, it's marbled, it's tons of fat. Look how pretty the pattern is. People should just like wear this as a dress. This pattern is just glorious. And guys, another thing, this is gonna be way cheaper than if you go to a restaurant and you ask for this kind of quality meat. It's gonna be way cheaper because you're buying it directly from the source. And this is something not a lot of tourists do, right? Not a lot of people do it. 
and this is like really just locals come here and do this. It's like a little hidden barbecue secret. I'm so happy to be a part of it. I'm so happy to be able to tell you guys about it. See the marbling just coursing through the meat. Hawu is probably my favorite steak outside of Wagyu. Usually it's got about 40% fat to 60% lean. Wagyu is about 60% fat to 40% lean or 50-50. So you're gonna taste a better beef flavor from the Hanwu. It's gonna be a little less tender, a little less juicy because there's just not as much fat content as the Wagyu, but you get a little, you give a little. And all you need to eat this with, a little bit of salt. All you need. Oh, man. Hello, Korea. God bless you for this. Mm. Juice just burst out from that meat. And it is less melty and buttery than a Wagyu, but it mixes it up with that great, huge, beefy flavor. And this is the beef stew. Mm. Oh, it's so good. The meat is good, obviously, but the stew, there's some mushrooms in here, a little cucumber, tofu, potatoes. This might be one of the best beef stews you will ever have. This is the tail chuck flap, and it's part of the cow that's kind of like right beside its neck. And this is one of the most tender cuts of beef. And what's great about hangu and the same thing with wagyu, it's okay to kind of char it up a little bit because there's so much fat content. It's never gonna be dry. Unless you completely burn it, it's never gonna be dry. Hang on a second. I'm just checking to make sure my, my, my brain isn't everywhere because I'm pretty sure my head was blown about a dozen times after that bite. Charcoal grill makes so much difference. That bite is just one of the juiciest bites of beef you can ever take. And at the same time, you're not just bombarded by that great beefy flavor in the juice. The smoke that's trapped inside the meat creates just this unbelievable combination. Brisket, one of my favorite cuts of meat. Oh. Perfect. It's so thin and fatty. The meat that we bought, it just renders so perfectly on your tongue. And as you chew, the fat renders a little bit more and more, and that bite becomes slightly beefier and more buttery. I love foods that change texture and flavor and mouthfeel as you chew it. And this is definitely one of those. I mean, this thing is basically the Super Saiyan of barbecue. And with something this fatty, you gotta balance it out with a little acid. Take a bite of this. Mm. And that sweet onion is soaked in a little vinegar, a little soy sauce, just to give your mouth a bit of a break. And the butcher actually called this the, the shrimp beef because it kind of looks like a shrimp. You know what's crazy? This place, even the freaking bunch on this cucumber. Back in New York, I found this pickle shop once. And they had horseradish pickles. This tastes just like that. I love this place. And the pickle shop closed and I could never find horseradish pickles that taste as good as that. I just found it here. This is like my barbecue heaven. Oh my God. That little shrimp meat, that shrimp cut of meat, that might be the juiciest piece we have so far, All right? That was like a beef juice gourmet. The flavor is almost too much. I mean, is that even a thing? Can a girl be too pretty or a guy be too cute? Is, can there be too much money? Can there be beef on a barbecue that tastes too good? Am I crazy? But if that were possible, that bite would have been it. That little shrimp part is actually part of the sirloin. It is the best tasting, most tender, juicy part of the sirloin. Calling it like a, like a shrimp cut is very fitting because that thing's a juicy. Also, you get a lot of beef for the money. I mean, there's still so much beef left. Not a bad thing. I'm very happy about that. I'm not sad about that at all. Oh, 
was so funny because um, the guy who sold us the beef, he came up here just like 10 minutes ago. He brought us this. And this is also from the neck. I think it's a leaner meat part from the neck. But this is crazy good. He said, we got to try this. And I'm like, what's so special about it? It's not that fatty, but there's like an incredible amount of beef flavor in this. It's definitely the beefiest piece of meat we had tonight. It's like I'm just like chewing on cow essence. It's not the most juicy, but that's definitely the most flavorful. I feel like my mind just keeps getting blown by this place. This is the most exciting part. Try a 21 day tenderloin. You can smell the age, the wisdom, the deliciousness. As happy as I already was tonight, I didn't think anything else could make me happier until I took a bite of this. It's not the juiciest bite I've taken. It's not the most tender bite I've taken tonight. But that aged tenderness with that slight funk makes this one of the most delicious bites that ever sat on this barbecue in front of me. I feel like you need a good combination of fatty beef and lean beef. Because with the lean, you get so much more of that great beef flavor with that wonderful char and that slight snappiness where you bite into it and the juice just starts flowing out. This thing is like the Mariano Rivera of beef. The perfect closer. I'm just gonna share it. By far the best Korean barbecue I've ever had in my life. I mean, I've had really fancy Korean barbecue, like at Colt, Colte, however you pronounce that in New York City, the Michelin star Korean barbecue. I mean, they did bring out like good cuts of steak, but that was like 200 bucks a person. That wasn't even 20% full after finishing that. This $180 worth of steak, we're still not even halfway through it. I mean, this thing could feed three people easily. This place that we brought it to, wonderful banchan, great beef stew, the flavors, the textures, the charcoal grill. Everything about tonight has been transcendent. And if you come to Seoul and you're craving Korean barbecue, come to this crazy meat alley. Choose your steaks, go up to one of these places, cook it. So you're more involved in the process. You're more like selective with your meat talk to the butcher, ask him what cuts are best. And honestly, I feel like we got some really, really quality stuff. And it easily would have fed three people. So it comes out to about 60 bucks a person. That's how much I usually would spend on Korean barbecue in the States. And trust me, the quality, not even close to what I had tonight. And if you look around, like Jelena said, it's just all locals. I'm like the only tourist here, but trust me, you gotta give this place, well not even this place, this whole experience a try. It is unlike anything I've ever had before. I mean, there's a lot of butcher shops and a lot of different uh, restaurants, but if you wanna go to the one I went to, it's this one right here. And it's this butcher shop. Oh, look, it's got a picture of uh, that guy. Thank you, thank you. What's up with that? Oh, actually, I was confused. Um, I didn't bite the meat over there. I just, that's the restaurant I went to. I got the meat from this guy right here. And this is his shop. It's good, man. Yeah, thank you. Go see this guy.